Hi everyone, uh, my name is William. Today I'm going to be talking about a qualitative study uh, exploring users in context privacy preferences for online tracking. And uh, This is joint work with my colleagues at CMU and Qualcomm. So I'm going to start by showing you all an example of online tracking with cookies. And cookies are these small tokens that can uniquely identify a web browser across sessions and they're used for many things including tracking users. And so how they work is when a user loads a web page from a web server, uh, like a news website, <laughs> the server tells the web browser to remember a certain piece of information, like your user ID. Um, so later when you request a different page from the same domain, uh, the web browser includes this piece of information uh, with your user ID. So this is an example of first party tracking. And uh, here the first party can use this to remember that you're logged in, but also about your habits, like what you've looked at or searched for in the past. Uh, and it can use this to content target for, to you. <laughs> and so now I'm gonna talk about third party tracking. Third party requests are requests to domains that a user did not explicitly request. And so here, uh, the first party web page can have content from many different places. Uh, like for example, it might contain an ad from an advertiser. And so when the web browser loads this page, it'll send along any cookies that it has for the advertiser and loads that ad from that third party. <laughs> and so this allows the third party advertiser to know when you visit any page that has content for that third party. And the third party could also be a third party on multiple different first party websites. Uh, so in this way, the third party may know more about you than any individual first party. So proponents will claim that this practice is used for targeting advertisements, customizing web page content. So these are some things that users or industry actually uh, want and find value in. And they also will say that the revenue from, that is derived from this practice is used to provide free services online. <laughs> However, critics will say that this raises some privacy concerns. Uh, so th these third parties can build very detailed profiles about uh, users, and this can largely happen without users' knowledge. <laughs> and so we just saw what the experts in the field are saying. Now I want to talk about what users think. And the reason we want to uh, know what users think is we want to understand what specifically users are comfortable or uncomfortable with so that we can improve current to tools to control and limit this tracking. So prior work has found in surveys that the majority of users have serious privacy concerns. Uh, the exact figure depends on the survey and the focus of the survey. Uh, however, qualitative work found that users' preferences are complex and sensitive to the specifics of situations. And users see both benefits and risks of tracking depending on the situation. So for example, when a user is shopping for household goods, they may have different concerns about online tracking than when they're shopping for a car loan. However, a lot of the prior work in this area has been done with hypothetical situations. And this is not ideal for a few reasons. Uh, first, uh, participants in these studies may not have enough context to be able to make a decision. And also what users say about their comfort in hypothetical setting is often different from what they say when faced with a concrete situation. Uh, and so this is known not to work very well. So for example, it's different to ask how do you feel about tracking on a shopping website uh, compared to how do you feel about tracking when you were shopping for heartburn medicine on Thursday on Amazon. <laughs> So in order to improve current tools, uh, it's critical to know users' preferences for tracking in the context of their own browsing history. And so part of this is understanding what harms uh, users care about and what situations they would prefer to not or be tracked or to be tracked. And so the reason this first question is important is that once we have a precise understanding of what users want or need, and then we can look at current tools to try to understand to what extent they satisfy users' needs and we might have enough information to let us design new, better tools that do a better job of doing this. So the purpose of this work is to see if current tools offer controls to allow users uh, to specify what they would like to be tracked. And so we use qualitative methods to address these, and we wanted to get a more accurate and detailed view of users' perception uh, preferences uh, that wasn't affected by hypothetical bias. And so we did an exploratory study to look at this issue through qualitative interviews 
We conducted 35 in-depth semi-structured interviews uh, and collected participants' real browsing history and used this during the interview uh, to explore their preferences for real situations. Uh, we paid participants $15 for an interview lasting one hour and participants were recruited by Craigslist posters and the U university participant uh, pool. And so when I say we use participants' real browsing history, uh, participants downloaded a browser add-on that we developed uh, to send us their web history. And so we then we searched through their web history and used it to prepare an interview with a participant about their own web browsing. And so participants had an opportunity to remove items that they uh, didn't want researchers to see or didn't want to be asked about during the interview. And uh, then we use this to conduct the interview. So unlike prior work, participants were able to tell us how they felt about what, uh, when this really happened as opposed to reacting to a completely hypothetical scenario. So we asked participants about a variety of different situations to understand their views across different contexts, and we asked about both first and third party tracking uh, situations from their browsing history. And in addition to asking about specific situations from their history, we also, about, also asked about their general views on tracking. So I'm gonna walk you through an example scenario that we uh, gave to participants. So we would show them a website and ask participants what are the benefits of tracking on this website, what are the harms of tracking, and whether they were overall comfortable with tracking on this specific site. Um, and so we analyzed the interviews using qualitative analysis. Researchers collaboratively analyzed interviews, then met to develop a code book. Two coders independently coded a test set and then discussed differences and then iterated and uh, independently coded the entire set of interviews. And so now I'm gonna talk about our results. And uh, so participants told us about their perceived outcomes for tracking for specific situations. And so these were, some of these were harmful and some beneficial. However, we also found that sometimes these outcomes were overtly noticeable to participants, and other times they were more hidden, only noticeable after reflecting on it. And so in addition to the outcomes of tracking that participants perceived, we also observed participants had preferences related to nuances of specific situations. So I'm gonna show you a few examples of the overt outcomes that participants saw. You can find more details in the paper. Uh, one example is targeted ads. So most participants had an opinion on them, uh, but interestingly, in many cases, participants saw them as beneficial. Uh, so telling them about useful products or services uh, in specific situations. Uh, so interestingly, some participants were also concerned about possible legal repercussions for their browsing history uh, for other situations. So here are some examples of more hidden outcomes that participants mentioned. Uh, notably, participants stated in some cases, the deriving revenue from uh, this practice of tracking was harmful and made them feel used by uh, companies. So you can find more details about these in the paper. Hmm. So we just saw what range of outcomes participants perceived. Uh, we wanted to know in what situations users are comfortable with tracking. And part of that is the outcomes that participants uh, perceived. But, and so interestingly, something can be seen to a participant as beneficial or harmful depending on the context. And while it was perceived as beneficial, a practice could be, they could be overall uncomfortable with tracking in that situation and vice versa. So just looking at the uh, outcomes that participants perceived did not determine exactly their, their comfort with the situation overall. Uh, unsurprisingly, however, in, when participants saw more harmful outcomes, they were less comfortable with tracking. So however, also the hidden outcomes seem to drive more discomfort uh, from tracking than the more overt outcomes. And so what outcomes people perceived uh, wasn't enough to tell us whether they were overall comfortable with tracking in that situation. So we looked in more detail at the specific situations. Uh, that they that they we asked them about uh, to try to determine what it was about particular page visits that people uh, made them more or less comfortable. So we call these uh, situational factors. And so I don't have time to go through these in detail here, but these are a few examples of things that uh, participants stated influenced their comfort in specific situations. So. We use these things that we learned about participants' views to evaluate how they might see current tools to control tracking. 
And so we wanted to understand if they allow participants to limit the perceived harms of tracking and at the same time allow uh, participants to derive some benefits from tracking. Um, and we wanted to see if current tools also offer controls to selectively limit tracking based on what participants said was important to them. <laughs> and so we looked at uh, uh, different tools ranging from uh, plugins that, uh, participate, that uh, you would install in a browser like Adblock or Ghostery, which are represented by the first two icons. And we also looked at uh, private browsing mode or manually configuring browser settings. Um, <laughs> And so what we found is while many of the tools are capable of addressing some of the harmful outcomes that participants cared about, uh, they're also bad at also allowing the benefits at the same time. Uh, so here a green check means that it can limit harmful out effects in some way, uh, but not, not also allow benefits. Yellow means that it might address the harms, and red uh, means nothing. And so while many of the tools are capable of addressing the harmful outcomes, uh, they're bad at also allowing the benefits, just what you can see by the amount of red and yellow. And so we think the reason for this is that the tools are bad at giving users selective tracking controls based on the situation. And so we examined whether current tools can implement users' situational preferences. And I don't have time to describe all of this in detail, uh, but overall we found only a few tools provide controls for users uh, for more than just a few of the properties that matter to users. So to briefly summarize our investigation of the current tools, we found that they're somewhat adequate at addressing the perceived harms. However, the tools weren't able to also allow the benefits of tracking. And so we believe this is because tools do not allow controls based on the nuances of specific situations that matter to users. So based on this more detailed understanding of users' preferences, uh, we think it's possible to build tools that do better. Um, and to that end, and this is some preliminary work, uh, we're, we looked at using machine learning to decide uh, whether a user was comfortable with tracking more all in a specific page based on the situation, situational factors that we found mattered to users. Um, so at a high level, we used machine learning methods to classify websites according to users' preferences, and we had two classes, comfortable or uncomfortable, uh, derived from our data set of specific situations. And we experimented with uh, some different machine learning methods, and we found that the best results were with at a boost, and I'm, what I'm about to show you uses those. Uh, we found that the ability to tune false negative versus false positive rate was particularly useful here because in our scenario, a false positive where you predict that tracking is okay and then uh, the user is actually not comfortable is more important than a, than a false negative. <laughs> uh, so on the x-axis here, you have the percent of bad tracking allowed uh, and on the y-axis, we have the percent of good tracking that would be allowed. And so an ideal tool would allow all of the good tracking that users are comfortable with while disallowing all of the bad tracking. Uh, so here's how uh, we do in, the, in this area. We do fairly well in some cases, uh, taking out the majority of uh, bad tracking while allowing some good tracking. And while this clearly isn't anywhere near perfect, uh, this is a first look at what machine learning can do here. And uh, so we didn't have the quantities of data that you'd really want for this kind of experiment, and we still think that this could work better than the, current, the way current tools do this. <laughs> so uh, in summary, we wanted to understand users' preferences for online tracking, and to do this we conducted interviews in the context of their own browsing history, and by doing this we gained a better understanding of users' preferences, evaluated current tools to control tracking. Uh, we also showed that there's some hope for this automated preference enforcement. Uh, so, thank you very much. <laughs>